In this video lecture, we're going to be discussing concavity of a function. So let f be a differentiable function on some open interval a, b. Then what does it mean for a function to be concave up and concave down? We say that a function is concave up on the open interval a, b if the derivative of the function, meaning f prime, is increasing. on the interval a b. Right, so graphically what would this mean? So for example, if we had the following picture of a function, right, so that's our y axis and this is our x axis, then observe if I had to investigate what is happening to the derivative f prime, in this case we're talking about the rate of change of the gradient at a point, so observe that as I move from left to right, so as the x values increase, observe that the slope gets steeper. So at this point, I have a flat gradient, um, a flat line, and not necessarily flat, but reasonably flat. And then at this point, observe that the line becomes steeper. So as I've moved from left to right, observe that the gradient has increased. So f prime is increasing. Similarly, let's say I gave you the following picture. Right, so now let's investigate what's happening to f prime, the gradient. So let's start and compare at these points. So from left to right again. So here is my tangent line and here is my tangent line. The gradient of this tangent line, observe here, that it's steep. And then as I progress more towards the right, the gradient of this line is flatter. Right? But observe what has happened. The function is decreasing, which means that the gradient sign is negative. So here I have a large negative sign, and here I have a smaller negative sign. So the negative sign, the magnitude of the value has decreased. So once again, because this was negative large and this was negative small, as we move from left to right, the value increased. So f prime still increased. So observe that although the function is decreasing, the derivative has increased. And in general, combining these two diagrams, if you have the following shape on a graph, then we say that this is concave up because f prime is increasing as I move from the left to the right. So this shape is concave So it's kind of like a smiley face. So when you have the smiley face shape, you've got a concave up shape. Now, what does it mean for f to be concave down on some interval? Then we say it's concave down if f prime is decreasing on the interval. So on the interval a, b. And then diagrammatically, similarly, let's suppose that I had the following shape. So once again, we observe that the function is certainly decreasing, but now let's in investigate what's happening to, uh, to f prime, to the derivative of the function. So if I worked with that value and then this value, and let me just draw tangent lines. Okay, so what's happened? So observe here that this was a flat line and then this became steeper but they're obviously negative values. So it was a negative small value which then became a negative large value. So clearly, f prime is decreasing, right? And then continuing, let's consider another shape. Let's obtain, let's look at the following. So if I consider what's happening at this value and at this value, so f is certainly an increasing function. The function has increased from left to right, but what's happening to f prime? So looking at my tangent lines, this is a steep line which then becomes a flat line. So observe that here we had a positive large number and here we have a positive smaller number. So again, f prime has decreased from left to right. And in general, if you have the following shape, then from left to right we have that f prime is decreasing. 
and we refer to this as concave down. So in general, if you have a kind of like a sad face shaped graph where it's kind of pointing downwards, it's concave down. So this is the definition of concave up and concave down, and this is determined uh, based on investigating whether the derivative is increasing or decreasing on an interval. So what happens if you need to find out if a function is concave up and concave down? So of course, um, working with the derivative and evaluating whether it's increasing or decreasing is not always reasonable. So we have the following criteria which can now be used. So if f prime is differentiable on some in so I didn't yes I didn't mean, mean to say differentiable right. So if f prime, the derivative of f is differentiable on an open interval a b, then we have the following conditions. So if the second derivative, and remember we now know how to compute higher order derivatives, so if the second derivative of f is positive for all x in the open interval a b, then we say that f is concave up. And if f double prime is negative for all x in our open interval a, b, then we say that f is concave down on the interval a, b. So this is a much easier criteria to work with especially when you're determining concavity on an interval. So if you have the interval, just compute the second order derivative and check. Is the second order derivative positive or negative on that interval? And you would be able to determine if it was concave up or concave down. In addition, we have the following concept, and that is the concept of an inflection point. So if function f has an inflection point, let's say x equals to a, so at a, if and only if f is continuous at x equals to a, and you know what continuous at a point means, and if f changes concavity at x equals to a. So by changing concavity, we are referring to changing from concave up to concave down or concave down to concave up. So a quick example of that will be the function y equals to x cubed. So your very basic cubic function. So observe up to the point x equals to 0, we are concave down. And then suddenly, after x equals to 0, we have a change to concave up. At x equals to 0, we are certainly continuous because observe, I could have drawn this function without lifting my point and I did not lift uh, without lifting up my pen and I certainly did not lift up my pen at x equals to 0 when this was being drawn. So therefore, the conditions for x equals to 0 to be an inflection point is certainly satisfied. It changes from concave up, uh, concave down to concave up and we are continuous at x equals to 0. Now, let's go on to an example. So in this question, we are required to determine uh, on which intervals uh, the given function is concave up and concave down. So we're given the function x minus 1 cubed plus 1. So remember from the previous slide, the criteria is that we need to evaluate, we need to determine the second order derivative of your function and then determine intervals for which uh, the second order derivative is positive or negative. So let's firstly start off by computing the first order derivative. So what is y prime? So looking at y, observe that we are going to require the chain rule to compute the derivative of that term. Right, so the chain rule tells you that it's a derivative of the outer function. In this case, our outer function is a variable cubed. The inner function is x minus 1. So it's a derivative of the outer function. 
evaluated at the inner function, which is x minus 1, times the derivative of the inner function. The derivative of x minus 1 is just 1. So that means that y prime, the derivative of y, is 3 multiplied to x minus 1 squared. So I now need to compute y double prime, so that means I'm taking the derivative of y prime. So here is y prime. Once again, I require the chain rule. The outer function could be expressed as 3 times a variable squared. So the derivative of 3 times a variable squared will be 3 times 2, which is 6, times the variable raised to the power 1. So we decrease the uh, power by 1. And then we evaluate this at the inner function. Our inner function is still x minus 1. And then we multiply by the derivative of the inner function, which is 1. So simplifying this, I have that y double prime is 6 times x minus 1. Now the question is, we need to determine where is y prime positive, strictly greater than 0, and where is y double prime, so I meant to say y double prime. So where is y double prime positive and where is y double prime negative? So looking at what y double prime is, it is a constant, a positive constant 6 being multiplied to x minus 1. So it's a positive number times some other number. So if I want to determine when this is positive, this amounts to saying that x, where is x minus 1 positive? Because positive times positive will give me positive. So x minus 1 needs to be Positive. And where is x minus 1 positive? x minus 1 is positive when x is strictly greater than positive 1. So that means that the function y equals to that expression is concave up when x is greater than 1. So how do I express that on an interval? So on an interval that is expressed as from 1 to positive infinity. And when is y double prime negative? So that will be negative when I have a positive being multiplied to a negative. So that means that it will be negative when x minus 1 is less than 0. And when will that take place? That will take place when x is less than positive 1. So that means it takes place on the interval minus infinity to positive 1. So based on that and based on the criteria, whenever f double prime is positive, we have that it's concave up on the interval. And whenever f double prime is negative, it's concave down. So therefore, we have that by the first condition, y is concave up on the interval 1 to positive infinity and y is concave down on the interval minus infinity to 1. So observe that the concavity changed at x equals to 1. So it moves from concave down to concave up. So we have a change in concavity. So at x equals to 1 is this function um, Define, sorry, is it continuous? Yes, this function is continuous at x equals to 1 because this is a polynomial. So also observe that x equals to 1 is an inflection point. So just by evaluating the second order derivative and determining on which intervals the second order derivative is positive or negative, we determined where the function was concave up and concave down. And based on the change of concavity, we were able to determine that a specific x value was an inflection point of that function.